By popular demand, this episode is an email management tutorial. And I say by popular demand because various people that I know in my own life have requested that I do a tutorial on this because they've seen my inbox and they've seen how lean and mean it is and how I can manage all the various emails that come in. They say inbox zero is a myth, but with this you know, implemented, I can pretty much keep emails to that range. You know, if I get past like six unanswered emails, that's a lot for me, if I'm being honest. Whereas the people in my life that I know, sometimes they have like 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 unanswered emails, possibly even more. There's some people that have like half a million. I don't even know. Like at that point, it's like, whoa, that's just, how are you managing this, right? So I'm going to give uh, my best shout at explaining all of this. We're going to call this version one, right? Because I want this to be a tutorial where you know you, you learn from it, you take it, apply it, and see what works for you, see what doesn't, you know, and, and comment down below of other things that you're running up against so I can you know offer those solutions up to you. Because you know, if I'm being honest, a lot of this stuff has become second nature to me because I've implemented it for well over a decade that you know, in order to even kind of extract all these things was a bit of a challenge because like I had to really think of like, okay, well, what am I doing really to, to make this all work? Um, so there might be things that I just omit simply because again, it's just so second nature that I don't think about it, but I will make my best attempt at it. We'll call this version one. That way, you know, I can continue to add on to this and help you out. Um, that is the goal. So first and foremost, um, my strategy works within Gmail. Um, it, it may be possible that all of this stuff is applicable to other email accounts, but for me, um, Gmail is the thing that I utilize, uh, and you know I've, I've been able to streamline it as such. Okay, um, and the reason for this is just, it's got all the the various tools um, that I need to be able to do this. Okay, so. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, I've created a brand new email account. Um, I've, I've named it Minky Potter. Um, Minky, after the name of uh, one of the main characters from Earth of Mankind, which is a book I recently read, and Potter as in Harry Potter, right? Just completely made up um, thing. I've, uh, you know, forwarded on some emails that have come into me, you know, um, from my spam folder and, and, and things like that. Um, and some that I made up, like let's work together deal points in the contract. Um, by the way, as you're listening to this, if, if you're purely in the audio podcast side of it, I would encourage you to check out the YouTube tutorial or go on Spotify, which supports video, because this is definitely a visual episode more than it is audio. But, you know, you can still get something out of it just by listening. Okay. So, uh, number one, why I like Gmail is because you can create labels uh, and organize things. Now, how you create labels uh, in terms of what you want. Um, so you go into settings. We're going to go see all settings. And here we have, you know, various options for us. So we're going to go into labels. And here's the default labels that they have. And for yourself, you're going to scroll down towards the bottom and you're going to want to create the labels that you want. And this is the part of it that there's no right and wrong. It just depends on you, right? So for the, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to make some up, like we'll call it legal. Um, we'll create that. Um, we'll call it, you know, pets maybe, right? Um, you can have one for, you know, fun activities, like whatever you want to label them as. And um, that's that's really up to you of what you decide and how many labels deep you want to go into it with. Uh, again, th th there's no right or wrong. Um, it's up to you, right? So, um, and I'll just make one for miscellaneous just because. Um, so there's my four, four, four labels at the moment, okay? Um, and that's going to become very important. Now, one of the nice things that I love about Gmail is that essentially on what I'll call the homepage, right? Your inbox homepage, you can organize it however you want. So see right here, 
it says customize your inbox. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. And we're gonna go back to see all settings. And we're gonna click on the tab that says inbox. And here is where, you know, the categories, you're gonna really get to um, uh, change it up how, how you want to, you know, have it be. So let's deselect these. And instead, what we want to do is, um, let's see, default, let's, okay. So an inbox type, you can select which one you want first. Um, I, for me, I always default to having um, my unread emails at the top, okay? And here's how you can essentially, so that opens up this um, menu for me for inbox sections where unread first and you can select how many emails show up at once. You know, of course they're gonna be there, but you have to kind of essentially click show more if you, if you have more than, in this case, 25 emails. Um, then right now it's everything else, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click customize priority inbox, right? And so here, um, I've essentially got four, um, four sections that I can have in my inbox, okay? So by default, I really love having my unread emails right there for me. Uh, next up, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create more options and let's just say legal. I'm gonna select legal as my secondary inbox. Um, now you can have you can utilize all four, but in this case, I'm just gonna go with three um, because for me, usually I'll have like an unread section. For me, I'll have like starred things that you know I just want to keep kind of in the front and center, but I don't actually have to take an action step with it. And then everything else is stuff that uh, you know that's technically not unread, but I haven't responded to. That's how I sort of look at it. And so we've gone ahead and selected that. So let's go ahead and save changes. And so now we're gonna go into our inbox and see right here, it already is kind of semi-organized, right? Where we've got all of our unread emails and we've got 12 of them. We've got our legal stuff, which there's nothing there yet and everything else, okay? so. One of the things that uh, you know we're gonna go ahead and go with, so let's just go through these emails sort of one by one and determine what to do with them. Okay, so this is a, an email from Google that is welcoming us, right, for having created that. Now, right now it's got the default label of inbox. Um, that's important to note and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, but let's just say I exit you know, back to inbox. So see what I mean by the you know, this email was read, it, you know, was in the unread section, but now it's in everything else, right? So, you know, because it still got the label of inbox there, right? So let's say, you know, I wanted to respond to that later. Um, I could do so, right? But, you know, there's nothing really to do here. So what I'm gonna do is, if you're creating multiple labels, um, it's best to, start with um, going into labels versus move to. Um, because the difference is if you click automatically move to and, and select miscellaneous, for example, as your label, it will automatically just get moved there and will go uh, nowhere else. But for the purpose of this, let's just say, you know, I needed this to go into fun activities and miscellaneous. So I can apply both labels to it. Now this email is in both of those labels but I no longer need it to be in my inbox. So what I'm going to go ahead, I can either click here and remove the label to um, get it out of my inbox, or I can click archive. Um, either one is fine. So we're gonna, we're gonna we'll get, go ahead and select archive. And all this, all that I'm doing is essentially clearing out the clutter. So I'm only focused on what I need to respond to, uh, and what sort of has an action item. Even if I don't have to respond to the email, that's why oftentimes, you know, stuff that I don't need to respond to, right? 
um, goes in everything else because it's just a nice reminder of like, oh, this is an action item, okay? Now, the emails didn't get deleted, right? Um, if I go into miscellaneous, there it is. I can always have it. But the idea is you want to declutter, move the stuff that like, you know, it's, it's all there for you if you need to search for it. But in terms of your view and your focus and your energy, you want this to be as clean as possible, okay? So, you know, the idea is you continue on going through kind of, you know, the various emails. Now, one of the things, like, as you go through this, okay, here's um, an email from apparently Joe Biden asking for money. Now, this is something that I forwarded on to myself, um, but... What you would want to do is, you know, either look for the unsubscribe somewhere um, down at the bottom of the, these types of emails, or you want to go ahead and just report spam there. Okay. Um, so anytime an email comes in that you don't want, just just unsubscribe, report as spam, you know, things of that nature. Um, now, oftentimes. You know, we, we get in this habit and th this is kind of the mental shift that you're going to need to do with in order to have as close to inbox zero as possible that you don't need much of this information, right? We, we tend to tr like to collect just in case information. That's why we get all these emails. We subscribe to, you know, this newsletter and, 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 you know, like I'm in film. So maybe I'll subscribe to like B&H photo and this and that. Like we just, we feel this fear of missing out if emails aren't coming to us, where in fact there's a joy of missing out, right? So listen, if you want the information, it's out there, you'll search for it and things like that, but don't clutter your inbox with it. That's a big mental shift that you're gonna have to take, right? Um, so the idea is, yeah, let's just, let's just get rid of um, stuff like this. Now, sometimes let's say uh, that you know, there's definitely instances where you unsubscribe and so forth, and yet you still keep getting emails. So what we can actually start to do is look for things that are um, similar, right? Meaning, uh, okay, if I keep getting these sort of emails, so, okay, so it says, the subject line is read the California DOJ weekly newsletter. So let's just take the term California DOJ, okay? And what we can do is we'll go back to all of our settings and we can create what, um, what are called filters and blocked addresses, right? So right now we don't have anything, but we can create a new filter. And you can do it on a number of ways. Um, you know, you can do it from, you can do it based on subject, um, has the words or doesn't have, so in this case, we're gonna put in subject California DOJ, right? And so right now that's all we're gonna put and we're gonna create a filter. And here you can, um, you can apply various action steps, right? Um, so in this case, what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna we're gonna just automatically delete it, okay? Anytime we get an email like that, we're just gonna automatically delete it. But you can do any number of actions. You can, you know, skip the inbox as it says, you can mark it as read, and you can select multiple, you know, ones of these. Um, in fact, uh, you know, sometimes when a, f when a friend emails me, sometimes um, just by the nature of just whatever, sometimes theirs goes to spam. So. I've noticed that with a few friends. And so that's where something like uh, from, let's say, becomes important because I could type in their email address, right? And then I can create a filter and I can always say, um, you know, never send it to spam, for example, right? Like that, that's that been something very important to me because I have missed emails from friends because just for some reason gone to spam. But getting back to this, you know, California DOJ is the subject that um, we just don't want those emails. So we're gonna create a filter and we're just gonna say, you know, for this, we're gonna keep it simple and automatically delete it. Again, this is the part of it that you sort of wanna play around with because this is a very powerful tool in, in, in a variety of ways, right? Uh, both for keeping emails um, 
and stuff like that. Let, uh, let me just kind of finish this up and give you some other examples. So we're gonna go ahead and create this filter. And so now any future uh, email with California DOJ in it is automatically just gonna be deleted, okay? Um, so we've got that. Um, now let's say, let's, you know, going back to this, here's another kind of good thing, right? Um, you know, let's say you're working on this project, you know, in my case, it's the arbiters, right? Or I can, you know, do it based off of an email address, but let's just say the arbiters, um, you know, in fact, we'll just put has the words, the arbiters, it doesn't even need to be in the subject line. We'll go ahead and create a filter. And all we're looking for is we're gonna apply an automatic label and we'll create a new label because we don't have that and we'll just call it arbiters. So that way when it comes in, it automatically creates the label of arbiters, one less thing for me to worry about. So we'll go ahead and create. Now, it would still show up in my inbox, but it would just come with a label so that way, you know, it, um, here, I'm just gonna quickly email myself. Um, arbiter, you'll see it in a moment. Do, do, do. I know this is the uh, sort of boring part of all of it, but um, let's just go ahead and refresh this. Nothing yet, it hasn't come in yet. Ba, 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 ba. It's coming, I swear. Sometimes it takes a moment. Okay, there we go, right? So here's an email from myself about the arbiters. And look at that, it's already marked as arbiters. So I don't have to worry about labeling. It's again, just one less thing. And so, okay, cool, I've read it. All right, noted. I don't need to do an action step with it. So we'll just send it to archive and it's no longer in my email. Cool, that's awesome. Right, so continuing on in terms of everything. So again, you just kind of wanna go through um, these emails and you know decide what, what essentially do with them. You, even if you decide that like, hey, I'm gonna deal with it later, you know, all that stuff, again, it's just kind of briefly going through it. So, okay, this, okay, this is spam. Um, this is spam. What is this? Okay, this is some Google document, cool. We'll send it to uh, miscellaneous. All right, where you deal, okay, this is spam, don't need that. This is spam, don't need that. More spam, okay, cool. Then we've got, let's work together. Okay, um, we'll call that, um, we'll, we'll put that in legal. Um, and then, and see, because I labeled it as legal, it goes in my folder um, on my inbox or section rather where it's got my legal stuff. You know, deal points, we'll put that also in legal and you'll see that show up there. <clears throat> and then the contract, you know, that's also legal. So we'll apply that and there it's all there. Now, again, these are all within my inbox. So let's say we finished up the contract, you know, here's the signed contract. Boom, babe. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> so we've sent that, cool, that's done. No longer need to worry about it. So now I can archive it and um, let's refresh this. Um, well, actually, um, because it is, um, yeah, I guess my mistake, you know, if it has that label, it will continue to show up here. Um, so up to you, uh, how you all utilize this sort of a thing. You know, generally I don't keep, um, like I said, for me, it's usually unread, um, then sort of uh, very important emails. That's sort of my, my label, you know, just kind of things to keep in mind. And then everything else of like, okay, I'll, I'll deal with this, in, you know, a little bit later today. Um, so we got that. Now, one of the things, you know, um, that I heavily utilize and the reason why I like Gmail is because I can integrate it with something called Boomerang. So, if you just search Boomerang for Gmail, um, you know, you'll get results. And what you're looking for is this website. And what you wanna do is uh, add this to your Gmail. 
And so we're going ahead and say add to Chrome. I'm going to add this extension. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. And now here's my. I gotta make sure it's all connected. So I'm just going through all the proper steps. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, cool. Allow. So um, now we got two new emails um, where we've granted Boomerang access to our Gmail account. That's fine. Um, we'll just move it straight to miscellaneous because we don't need to worry about that. And here's Boomerang um, congratulating us. So we'll put that in miscellaneous for the purpose of this. And again, your labels, um, you should be a lot more specific with it. I'm just keeping it simple um, as much as I can. So the good news is um, with all this, um, so for example, right, we, we've been taking, you know, we've been seeing stuff and just putting it miscellaneous, right? Um, the nice part is, again, because I like to keep things so minimal that if there's an email that I know I don't have to deal with for a few days or a couple of weeks, like let's say, you know, someone emails me, um, you know, today being February that like, hey, in June, can you send me this report? It's like, how in the hell am I supposed to remember that, right? You know, of course I can put it in my calendar, but what's actually easier, let's just, um, let's just assume that this is that email to send something in uh, June. What I can do is at the, at the top here, click Boomerang, and I can select essentially when it's gonna come back. So, you know, let's go ahead and just select uh, June 1st, right? And I can even select the, the time of day that I want to come back. So we'll say 6 a.m. June 1st confirmed. So now this email will come back to me into my inbox as an unread email on June 1st. Let me give you kind of an example of this um, right here, right now. So um, boom. So, so in in a few minutes, this email will be kicked back into my inbox, okay? So we'll see that happen. Now, while we wait for that to come in, the other nice thing you can do, um, which is really, really beneficial to me is, so let's say I'm composing an email. I can go ahead, um, email at email.com, that's who we're emailing it to. Um, uh, Please send me the graphics. That's the subject line. Hi, person. I need those graphics sent by the end of the week. Cool. So down at the bottom, um, I can select remind me in and then I have options here if no reply. So I'll go ahead and select this. And so I'm essentially asking this person to send me you know, these graphics by the end of the week. So what I'll do is I'll select uh, Friday and you know, we'll just put kind of, let's say 10, 10.02 a.m. and I'll confirm that. So now I'm gonna send this email and on Friday at 10.02 a.m., uh, if they haven't responded, this will kick back into my unread uh, portion and I'll know, oh shoot, I requested this but didn't get it back, right? So that way I don't have to think about it. Uh, I'm letting Gmail and Boomerang really do the work for me, right? Now, the other fun part is, I'm not gonna do it with this email, although we, um, okay. Um, so I can even select with Gmail, like for example, if you, if you know you're gonna be sending out uh, a promotional thing, you know, for whatever it may be, uh, you know, for example, like I'm doing my crowdfund for the Arbiters at the moment, which is my animated feature film, you know, it helps to pre-plan that and so pre-draft emails and instead of sending it now, I can send it at a future date. So let's say I'm gonna send it um, on the 20th of February at 9.03 p.m. You know, I can confirm that, although right now I won't. Um, we'll just go ahead and send this one right now. So we've sent that. 
and you know, come Friday, if they haven't responded, it will kick back, much like this email. See, um, this was the other email that we had um, boomerang to ourselves. And so, you know, now we know, oh, okay, yeah, cool. Now, this is the time, this is the appropriate time to deal with this as opposed to when it initially was emailed to us, we didn't have to deal with it. Uh, now, it, it's time to do it, right? So we can do that, okay. Um, here's all the stuff requested, boom, I did that. Cool, email sent, and now out of our inbox it goes, because it's done, it's handled, boom. All right, um, so there we have that. Now, one of the biggest um, sort of ways that people get behind on their inbox is when they go on vacation, right? And, you know, when they come back from vacation, even if it's a week, all of a sudden there's all these emails to deal with and you're playing catch up. Like the first day back is just playing catch up as opposed to, you know, hitting the ground running and going. Or conversely, you know, because people know this problem when they're on vacation, they'll be checking email and sort of working through it. What I recommend, and it's bold strategy, is to literally say, um, put an out of office um, email, right? Uh, a vacation thing, and you can do that in, under settings. And if you scroll down, uh, you know, immediately, you will have a vacation responder here, and you can select the dates. Um, you know, so let's say my vacation starts on February 19th, you can select the last day. Um, we'll select the, uh, the 1st of March. Um, you can create the subject line, I'm on vacation. And I'm not gonna type this all out, but the idea that I would recommend, and again, it's a bold one, is to pretty much say, hey, I'm, I'm unavailable from February 19th to March 1st. During this time, I will not be checking emails. Anything sent to me during this time will be automatically archived and unread. So if you need me to do something, please email me March 2nd and, and I can do it. Otherwise, it will not be responded to. It's bold, I know, I understand but it does work, okay? Um, okay, so we've got that. Um, and then one thing I would recommend to you is to um, check your spam weekly. I know I talked about this idea that um, there's been emails that I've initially missed because they've been going to spam. And th this is how I've integrated into um, my sort of system is at, at the end of the week, you can do it, you know, longer if you, every two weeks, month, whatever it is. But, uh, you know, it, it's good to kind of check spam just to see if anything's going there. And if by accident something's going to spam that shouldn't, obviously take it out of spam and also go in and create that filter so it never goes to spam again. Um, and then sort of the last tip I have for you in all of this is um, to utilize the Gmail app uh, on your smartphone because a lot of this will be integrated in that way. And, you know, people give me a lot of crap and I'm not saying switch over to Android, but this is why I like uh, Android specifically because obviously this is Google, Android's Google. So there's a lot of integration. Um, and what I see here uh, essentially, you know, mimics there. And I know iPhone's done, especially with the Gmail app, they, they've, um, you know, Gmail or Google specifically has updated the app. So the experiences should be quite similar. I don't hundred percent know because I don't, um, utilize, uh, iPhones, right? I only have an Android and, but for me with my Android, it becomes very easy. And what I see here, I see on my phone and that's how I'm able to, to manage a lot of this, um, because it's all synced up in that way. And, and whatnot. So um, that's kind of the overall um, thing. It's, you know, it's a little bit nuanced. Yes, um, you have to really sort of almost do a trial and error um, for it to see what works best for you. And of course, if you're if you're in a starting position where you just have a crap ton of emails, you know, I would recommend, you know, just kind of take your time with it, um, you know, week by week, just make progress and organizing it, cleaning it, 
um, getting rid of stuff you don't need, you know, um, unsubscribing, stuff like that, archiving stuff, um, yada, yada, um, and just take it a little by time, you know, you have to understand for me, like I said, I've been doing this over a decade and at this point, you know, it's a streamlined system, but it takes a while to, to get there, no different than if you're working out, at, you know, at the gym and, and trying to work on your cardio, whatever it may be, right? It, it takes time to progress. So don't be upset with yourself. Um, and it really is all about doing the little things well. I mean, that's what mastery and an advanced level is, is just doing the small things really, really well. So, you know, a lot of this stuff, uh, one of the reasons why I have avoided doing a, such a tutorial to begin with is because, you know, in, in many ways, it, it, to me, it's, it's it's the boring stuff. I have, in my mind, far more exciting stuff that I want to share with you and teach you. But I also know this stuff is important and will tremendously help people's lives because it's helped mine. And as I said, we'll call this version one because I'm sure there's a lot of stuff um, that as you go through this, things will arise. And so I want you to comment down below. I want to be as... Uh, you know, beneficial to you as I can. So, you know, there will be a part two and so forth. Um, so your feedback is ultra important to me and, and being able to, to do that. Uh, hopefully this gets you um, started most, not only started, but most of the way there. Um, thank you um, for taking time to tune in. You know, one of the things people have sort of said like, hey, you should like literally just do a whole like master class of this and charge people, you know, like people would be willing to pay for this. You know me, I'm not like that. If you want to support me in that way, there's my Patreon page. Um, I do have a sub stack. And if you're watching this within, you know, the, 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 the last weeks of February 2024 and the first weeks of March 2024, um, I do have a crowdfund going. Um, for my latest film project and it would be incredible if you pledged to that like that's what you can do for me uh, all those links are down below so check them out thank you so much as always like i said i want to make this as beneficial so please please be sure to comment with you know questions thoughts feedback all that good stuff thank you so much i'll talk to you next time